day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey everybody, you know I'm glad you're back and I hope you enjoyed the video. You know we've been talking first about hell, right? Now we're talking about heaven. Because that's where everybody want to go, right? We, we already recognize and that's why we're focusing on not to sit there and get you to dwell on hell, but to dwell on the fact you ain't going there. You don't have to go there. Amen? He didn't prepare for you. He didn't prepare the lake of fire for you. So stop going on this gift trip and thinking, that, oh, Lord, I'm going to hell because I party too much. I dance too much. I drink too much. I do stupid things too much. We all do. So if you're going to sit there and think that because you don't, because other people don't smoke, don't chew, and don't hang with people like you, that you're going to hell, I'm telling you right now, you're going to heaven if you've received Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. Let him work on you. I like that we talked about today, this uh, Sunday, the 8th of March. We talked about the fact that, that I am, this is Philippians 1, 6, that says, I am confident in this very thing, that he who perform a good work in you will do it until Jesus comes. I'm going to tell you something. Heaven rejoices when a sinner repents. God is all sitting there saying, let's get connected through him. Let us trust in him and believe in him. Let us walk by faith, not by sight. See, that's the thing I tell you. I'm going to put this one piece into you. I had some friend today. Some of the guys at the study today. I asked them, one of them had a cup in front of them. All of them had a cup or something in front of them. But I had one that said a cup in front of them. And, 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 and I asked this question, and I asked it to you, too. And I know you can't answer because I'm in the video and you're not. <laughs> but anyway, do you believe that I have this cup in my hands? I asked them the same thing. Did they believe that they have a cup sitting in front of them? And you know what they said? They believe that there's a cup sitting in front of them. And some of you said, I believe that. Ken Taylor is holding a cup in his hand. You know what? I don't believe I have a cup in my hand. I don't believe I have a cup in my hands. I know I have a cup in my hand. Amen? Faith is the sum of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it with your senses, you don't need to believe it. You need to know what you're seeing. Now, I credit this. Sure, you can sit there and say like, like tricks and stuff where people can make you think you see something. But my bottom line is if I can do some touching, if I can use some of my senses to verify the existence of what I'm holding, then that's I don't need to believe that. I know it. That's the whole point. Most of us sitting there focusing on what our senses can ascertain. It's all about being spiritual. And faith is spiritual. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I cannot have faith in what I see. I either see it or I don't see it. And when I see it, I don't believe in it. I know it. I know what I have. I may interpret something and you may have a different interpretation of what you see, but if it's been determined and measured by your senses, you don't have to believe in it. You have to know it and recognize you know it. That's what we're saying is believing in Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but of everlasting life. It says believe. There is no way you can 100% know about Jesus except for by believing in the words that have been given to us. That's believing, okay?
And that's what he said. That's all you need to understand. And when you receive him, just believe that you've been delivered. Believe that he has paid the price of your sin. Believe that he has forgiven you of all your sins. So if, therefore, if nobody else wants to believe, you know he did. And you know what? Only he that matters. I mean, it's good we have people who can for, forgive us. It's good that we can forgive ourselves. But the main thing is, the creator has forgiven us. That's believing, okay? And that, that doesn't take a lot of work. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to work for your salvation. You believe that you're saved. You believe that you're going to heaven. And that's what this title is all about. Believing by knowing him. The more we know him, the more we understand what he has prepared for us is in heaven on high. And that's the gospel. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk by what we know. We walk by what we believe. And if you can believe, Philippians 1, 6, be in confidence in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is working on every last one of us. So just focus on what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Stop sitting there trying to dread because you failed the test. You ain't got to pass the test. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. Receive the gift. Move on. And if you're sitting there doing the party and everything else, then if that's bothering you, then take it to the Lord. He'll work with you on it. But don't sit there and condemn yourself. And then when you start doing things you got no business doing, sitting there with acting and have a relationship with people you don't have no business have a relationship with, then you can sit there and say, Lord, work with me on it. And he'll work with you. I don't know, it may take 10 years for him to work on a relationship that if you live with somebody that you're not supposed to be living with instead of being married to somebody you should be married to. He'll work it. Your job is just to trust in him. And also, I had one of my friends tell me, uh, you just got to be strong. Well, I need to be strong in him, not in me. And I don't need to put myself in situations that don't need to be. Neither should you. So, Philippians 10, I mean, something 310, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering conform unto his death as I know him and the power that he has given me. Heaven is got my name written in the book. Amen. All right. I'll see you later, but I hope you enjoyed the video and continue to come back. Also, we also came up with a new uh, text to give. If you ever want to give, uh, you could just text, use that number and text. You can give to us and have our ministry keep growing and do the things of God. We enjoy you. We appreciate you. And we hope you keep coming back. Amen. I'll check you later. Bye-bye. All right. Ron Jackson, let's go. What you got, sir? Father in heaven, Lord, you are welcome here. Make this holy ground. We thank you, dear Father, that you have given us these provisions, these yes. resources, this place. Yes. Where we can come and leave the rest of the world outside. Yes. And study your word. Yes. For your divine reason, you have chosen us yes. to be here, to yes. fellowship, and to grow yes in your precious and holy word yes. to learn about your precious and holy son and to have a precious and holy relationship with you yes we thank you for your love your mercy your compassion mm. your grace your grace demonstrated through your son jesus christ yes who died for all mankind thank you so that we would all have a way back to you back to you Father, in all of eternity, we could not thank you enough mm -hmm. for what you have done, yeah. for the love that you have shown, yes. for the mercy that you continue to display, yes. and for the grace that is freely given to those who believe. Come on. <laughs> and we thank you that we have this time, yes, this now, time. To, to learn even more, to get additional <laughs> revelation. We just ask Woo. that you give us the divine wisdom yes. to not keep these, these revelations to ourselves. Come on. <laughs> To gift those to others. Yes. Use us 
according to your will and your way. Yes. Now the words that Pastor <laughs> Taylor has, we know they come from you. You, yes, Lord. Prepare our minds, prepare our hearts, prepare our ears, <laughs> prepare our spirits. Yes. That we may hear what you have for each of us. Each of us. Not just in this room. Yes. But for those who will, who will hear this message later. Mm. We say all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Hey, this is what, you know, I, I, was, I was talking to some people that was talking about the title, uh, Hell, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and some people were like, because they, they don't want to deal with even yeah. Hell, man. It's like uh, too hard for them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, they, if they listen to it, we're really trying to skew on the part of the gospel, which is you don't have to go there. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to shift now, because, you know, the whole focus this beginning of this year was that I mean, no Him. Right? Mm -hmm. And the power of his resurrection, right? And the fellowship of the suffering. And the title now said, knowing him means going to heaven. Amen. No matter who you are. Amen. 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 By knowing him. And that's the critical piece in there, knowing him. And then the other piece I always focus on is the power of his resurrection operating our lives. And that's a benefit for those who get to know him. And that's what we want to be let people understand, man, it is about the, the, the gospel. It's not about the gatekeepers anymore. But I don't care about gatekeepers. I care about believers receiving Jesus Christ. Our, our ministry is important to Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. And, and that's what we want to say, get to know him. And this one I thought, Brother Jackson, Philippians 1.6. I, 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 Brother Jackson, I, I talked to some people today, and I, I talked to somebody yesterday, I've been talking throughout the week. This one right there, Philippians 1.6, is very, to me, very critical to, to a believer and to those who uh, want to receive Jesus and then the children that we have, right? The, the, our children. Yes. This is key. I like this. Being confident in this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm saying the fact we raise our children and to, to, when they're young about the word of God and get them to be, you know, get baptized, receive Jesus, then this sets the tone of saying, I'm very confident. This is what Paul is saying. Uh -huh. So when you, look at, when you look at your children, when you look at somebody who wants to become a, a, a believer, a lot of people that say, I'm not, well, I'm not ready yet, right? And then there's some, like, and, and I'll mention his name, you know, Brother Bell, he, he's talking about, well, I just don't believe that you can keep doing this and, 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 and be saved, right? I, the, the Philippians 1.6 is very easy to say, I'm, brother, I'm confident in this very one thing, this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how much you keep slipping, sliding, falling back, or not moving at all. You, as another believer, Brother Addison, mm -hmm. is to say, I'm confident in this one thing. That he who have begun the good work. Not you, mm -hmm. not that person, but him. That's why I'm saying, that's why I think, that's why all that is in Philippians anyway. I may know him. Because I'm, I need to know him so I can be confident in him. That if he, if a person make a decision, a quality decision to receive Jesus Christ, then all of a sudden, I'm saying all of us should be very confident in this thing. That he has begun to good work on that person would do what? Perform it right. until the day of Jesus Christ. Hey, the other part of the gospel is me. <laughs> hey, brother, it's me. Right. Huh? I'm very confident in me that he's going to perform in me. The good work he has begun. That's all right, you know, sometimes we worry about when the enemy trying to put in your mind about sliding back, about moving away. All you need to understand is I'm very confident. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. And then in fact, in the Hebrews 12, 2, it said, looking unto Jesus, look, he's the author and finisher of our faith. Faith is what? I can't, also, when you mention the people, I'm saying faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hey, I ask people, brother, I sit there and say, I'll, I'll, I'll use any object for ministry too. And y'all might want to use it too. Okay. 
Yeah. I'll take it back and say that cup right there, that, that's right there on the table. And I asked him, I asked somebody, do you believe that that cup is right there? And you know what they said, brother? I believe that cup is right there. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that cup is right there? You do? Yes. Do you believe that cup right there sitting in front of you is there? Yes. You do? You believe? Well, I guess I, this is a teaching point for both of you. I don't believe that cup is there. I know it's there. Therefore, I don't have to. See, I want them to understand the difference between believing and knowing. And to understand when faith, faith is not. I can't have faith in that cup is sitting there. Why, Brother Asa, why I can't have faith in that cup is sitting there? Because it's there. It's there. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And our walk is not based on what we see, it's based on the things that we can't see in the physical realm. Amen. Amen? Right. God wants us to walk in the expectation of something good. That's what you want to do when I look at my children, expectation of something good. You see, I'm brother, see, I'm brother, I'm, my children are saved through Jesus Christ. My faith is in him who has begun the good work in him or in them. Whoa, brother, you see what I'm saying? And then you, because that's the good news in the gospel because also we're doing the same thing about people that you're ministering to. Amen. Hey, brother, all you need to come to Jesus Christ and let him be the author and finisher of your faith. Because maybe you don't have evidence because of your actions. So your actions is evidence of not being saved. Ah! Are you with me, brother? That's true. You're, uh, evidence of you not being saved, but your faith. <laughs> you know, Go ahead. Um, and, and, and as you were saying, that, I was just thinking about how you know how do we help people overcome their doubt? Yes, sir. You know, we have had doubt ourselves. Yes, sir. And um, you know, I, I can't remember. Is it the Grand Ooh. Canyon where they got that glass? Yeah. Uh, well, this is the Grand Canyon, but there's some place where they've got that glass thing that goes out mm -hmm. over. Over the oh, and, I heard something about that. And basically, you just see through it. Yeah. And it's the, you can see. Now, there are those who uh, maybe give you know, I, I know there are these just just thrill seekers. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. But I'm one that you know what? Uh, I know it, that I, I I when I say no, I'm talking about academically speaking. I know that that thing's out there. But you know what? Uh, I don't have enough faith in in, in engineers. <laughs> There's a lot of people that go out there. Brother, you can go out there. <laughs> I probably would not. Uh -huh. And why is that? Why? Because of lack of belief. Yes, sir. See, for me. Come on now. For me. Come on. He believes for him. And I think it's, to, to as we use these things, this is one reason why it is difficult for people, yeah. different people that we come in contact with. Yes, sir. With, because they, they struggle with the same yes, sir. things. Yes, sir. They're in a physical yes, scenario. Sir. Uh -huh. I struggle with the same thing. Wait a minute, brother. It worked for you. And you were able to walk out there uh, knowing, perhaps, that that thing was going to hold you up. And uh -huh. you said it was going to. Everybody else done done it. You've seen them do it. That, yeah. But, but, but brother Antoine, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'll be on the edge. I'll look. <laughs> um, I had a young lady, matter of fact, that friend of mine, she's telling me his daughter just graduated from the Marines. Yeah. And she talked about how they went off the 10-meter um, the board into the water for their survival training or for their water training. Now, when I was at school in Colorado, I did not go off the 10 meter board. I told them, and I told them, and as they tried to send people up that day, I told them, I'll, I'll throw every one of them off this thing. I said, I know which way I'm going. I, I mean, when I say I knew which way I was going back down, let me tell you something. I had it already in my mind how I was taking folks out when they was coming. You got stop. I did. It, I had. I don't know, you know how you see the movies yeah. where like Denzel, he figured out. I ain't lying, I had, it, I had it all figured out. I, I knew how I was taking people out. That's a difference, you know, and, but, but if we can, I think for me what this is telling me is understand, because you know, we get frustrated when people aren't just saved by the drugs, right, don't right, we? Right, right, right. But that's kind of how some people are. Hey, it may have worked for me, for whatever reason, yes, right? Sir. But for somebody else, those same situations, that same scenario doesn't work. And then we just kind of help them grow and find it. But we got it, you, you know, we do have to use scripture. Yes, I mean, sir. I only just came to this body, which you were just yes, saying. Yes, it makes sense, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, 
And I just pray for people who are struggling. Yeah. And who are lost. And maybe like me. Hey, you were right there. Mm -hmm. You were right there. You were right there. And all you have to do is take that. Come on now. Yes, sir. Faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you would realize. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So uh, amen to them. Amen. 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 And, and, and think about it, like and using that good example, the, with the people that trust in that, 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 that glass over the grad camp. They based on the testimony or observation of others who have walked out there. Mm -hmm. They so they confident in this thing because they have some evidence. And technically, some of the other evidence would be, <coughs> you know, before you walk out there, <laughs> you put your hands on walking out there is is thinking folks are confident. Uh, you know, if someone walks out there and nothing happens to them. Yeah. And, uh, and they're sitting there observing. Yes, sir. That would give them some confidence we have, yeah. and faith to actually step yeah. out there and, yeah. and do likewise. Yeah. But yeah. I'm with brother. I'm with you. Yeah. 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 You can step out there all you want. <laughs> I don't need you to take a picture for me. <laughs> you know, I, I'll look at that. Yes, sir. I don't need <laughs> to uh, to be sitting up there, uh -huh. you know, where if that thing fails, that's it. Right, right. You know? Um, and, and that's the difference in saying that the the failing part is what is your issue, right? Yeah. I mean, I haven't walked out and seen it. But my point is that those who walked out there, they didn't see it because other people walked out there. You're saying, I don't have no doubt that it's out there. Yeah. There's a glass thing out there. What I have is not confident that it won't fail. Yeah. It worked for me. Exactly. And, I, and for those who get us later, I'm not sure exactly Grand Canyon. I just know that there's a there's a, uh, there's I, a I've, I've seen a, a photo of of this thing, and I'm not sure if it's at the Grand Canyon or not. What there's quite this. a few of them. There's there's some in uh, skyscrapers, mm -hmm. you know, where you can step out and and you're like up there on the 50th floor or something like that. Mm. And there's a, a glass floor where you can step out and look down, you know. How about that one that's on the for that? Vegas that had that, that looked like it's gonna fall. It's just like a little rail. Oh, like, and it just dropped and you kind of yeah, lean forward yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That yeah, and that prayer that's scary as heck too. That's, that's ridiculous. Right. I mean I have no purpose. Woo! Even that would that fail, yeah. Uh at the amusement park where it's an elevator dropping man. Yeah. And I've had dreams about, about <laughs> elevators, you know, just falling. Why yeah. would I want to put myself <laughs> you know, in, in that. Now, I can ride a roller coaster. Right. But that particular one, Brother Addison ain't going to never get on yes, that. Yes, sir. Yeah. There will not be no simulated elevator drop with Brother Addison on exactly. that. Thing. Exactly. Exactly. I'll watch it. Probably wouldn't even let my son get on that thing. Right. You know, and, despite how much he wanted to get on it. And the other thing, too, about some of that is, is tempting. You're testing. Yeah. You're tempting. And, and at least in the, in the faith, is that is we're not tempting God. Remember that's what uh, the devil tried to get Jesus to do to yeah. tempt the Lord. And but what we are walking in faith is not tempting, it's just saying I'm having this confidence in what you're gonna do, Lord. Right, not in myself. Come on. But in you. what you're gonna do and I have and for something that I need too, right? See you don't need to walk out on the glass or the Grand Canyon. You don't need to really get into a fall in the elevator, right? You don't need to do those things. But I, but I do need other things. To include my salvation. That's right. Come on, brother. That's right. It's, it's a difference of expectations, yes, right? right? So that one says that he's the author of his faith. And then another part I said in Ezekiel 33, in fact, is I say unto them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And when we talk about death, we're not talking about physical death. You know, we're talking spiritual, right? right. That disconnect. He don't want he, he has no pleasure in that, right? right? And we need to know that in people we minister. Because the whole person is preaching the gospel, right? Now, last week we was talking about the the the, the hell was, was prepared for the devil and his angels, right? Yes. So so I'm saying it's the shift, you know, I'm trying to say now, so I said no on hell means going to heaven. Let's let's focus on forward now, going forward up on on what does it mean to be saved and what is being prepared for us. Okay. Right? See, we're not prepared for the great white throne. We talked last week, right? That, that, that's not for us. Mm -hmm. That's for who? Brother Asa, that, that's for the... That's 
for those who did not accept Christ. Or for the dead. Yeah. Which means those who didn't accept Christ, right? Yes. That's for the dead. Remember it said the dead was brought before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not going through that because we're not dead. When we receive and have the faith that I'm alive in him. Amen. Amen. And that's all I have to do is believe. Not knowing that that's why I say some people are probably because I need to know Brother Addison. But no. Thomas had to know. Thomas, when when Jesus, when the other disciples, just like that glass head, the other disciples saw, or the apostles saw Jesus. He came. And, and they, they worship him and they fellowship with him. And Thomas came and Jesus wasn't there and they told him, yeah, brother, you had 10 people. 10 people. Because it, it was 12 all together, we lost Judah, Judas, right? So then we had 11. When Jesus showed up, 10 of them were there when he first showed up. Amen. Those 10 people said, I, bro, it's almost like I, if you came in here and I said, Jimmy here, man, he just walked through this door. He just walked through the wall, man, and came and talked to us. You know? And you're like, I ain't seen him in a minute. No, I don't believe, I don't believe Jimmy came in here. Right. And Brother Addison, yes, he was in here. And he, you said, no, no, I, I can't receive it, which is what Thomas did. Right. And then Jesus showed up, did, and then Thomas believed. Mm -hmm. And he said, blessed he who believe and have not seen than he who have seen and believe. That's what God said is a blessing because now you're exercising that faith on everything. Because the Bible said, brother, I said, the just shall live by faith. He talking about we're supposed to walk in expectations of good mm -hmm. and in God, and what God is going to do for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. So now, so let's focus on this. And, and, and you got it, brother Josh Jackson. This is John chapter 14, verse 1. You can read that, and we interrupt you as Brother Addison seems fit. All right. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Right. Ye believe in God. Come on now. Believe also in me. And I like the part about the fact is the first piece is not let your spirit, because that means something in your heart, not your physical heart, right? And that's another thing, too, as we read things, make sure you understand, we're talking spiritual levels yes. as well as physical levels. That's this right. way, so let not your heart, let not your spirit mm -hmm. be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God. And that's the critical piece of the beginning anyway. Believe in God. And then just like what John 3.16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever does what? Believe. Not knowing, but believe. That's, you know, I think that's just so, I just want to believe. Faith is believing that he gave his only, he gave his son. Right. Right? right, right. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Then we're not talking about physical life. We're talking about spiritual. Right. I, I think I just think this came in a few months ago. I was just thinking about that. Everything we have to look at from what is he saying? Some people think it's saying they, they're afraid of dying, and, and, and therefore they came up with this concept of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Their focus is on the physical. Right. We're focused on the spiritual. That's right. This evidence is enough evidence to show everybody whether they physically, you know, whether they, they they walked the world, they all went to take a dirt nap. Mm -hmm. That that's that's we got enough evidence of that. That's right. So there ain't nobody trying to focus on the physical eternity. Right. They're talking about the spiritual eternity. That's what he's talking about. So have everlasting life spiritually. Amen. Amen.